Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to recover lost data from a NAS storage system with the example of D-Link DSN 1100, how to extract data from the disks inside an inoperable NAS device. Hello friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. As we know, NAS is a server for storing data at the file level. In fact, this is a computer with an array of disks which is connected to a network. The data stored on such device can be shared and uh, used by all members of such network. Data storage systems like that are becoming more and more popular, as most of them are using this or another type of RAID technology to achieve better fault tolerance and protection of the information stored inside. However, when it comes to data recovery, it's not always clear what to do with such an array. Most devices of this type don't have any operating system, and the RAID array is created with the help of a controller. That is why you can't choose the easy way – install and run a data recovery tool on the NAS device. Instead, you'll have to take the disks out of the storage system and connect them to a computer directly. But still, you can't just plug the data cables into your computer's ports and copy the information without using specialized software tools. When the disks are connected to the computer, the operating system won't be able to recognize them, and it will suggest to initialize the disks for further use. However, initialization will erase all the data which is still on the disk, and any recovery operations you conduct later can hardly be successful. So, never initialize such disks if you still want to extract that data. To recover lost information from a NAS system, use Hetman RAID Recovery. This utility supports data recovery from almost all existing RAID types, and the lost information will be back in a moment. It supports the file systems used in Windows, macOS, Linux, and Unix. The program will fix any errors in the logical structure of the hard disk and recover all of its contents. If the program failed to build and display a RAID system automatically, which is what happened in our case, you can help it by specifying additional properties in the Constructor app to get that array created in the right way. I will show you how it's done with the example of a hardware RAID 5 consisting of 5 hard disks and based on a D-Link DSN 1100 storage device. If you want to see the process of building and configuring a RAID system in detail, follow the link in the description for a dedicated video on that topic. Now let's simulate a situation when a NAS system breaks down. As a result, all that we have is 5 hard disks full of data. Let's connect them directly to a Windows computer. The operating system identifies them as uninitialized drives. Start Hetman RAID Recovery. The program can see all the disks, but it's unable to rebuild the damaged array automatically. It means we'll have to create it manually. Uh, this NAS model is based on the following principle. At the beginning of the disk, the controller writes various service information. After that, the partition style MBR or GPT, and this is what makes it different from other controllers. As the beginning of the disk is not a specific value, you'll have to find it manually. There are certain signatures which can, which can be useful to find the beginning of the disk. For MBR, it looks like this. And for GPT, like this. However, as this specific controller type writes data in its own way, it takes every four bytes and places them in a reverse manner. We'll have to change those signatures. Depending on the RAID type, the beginning of the disk can be located on one or even on several drives. In our case, with RAID 5, the beginning of the disk is only on one of the drives. If you know the partition style and the order of the disks that were included into your array, start searching from the first drive. If you don't know this information, search every drive, at first by the MBR signature and then by the GPT signature. Open the disk in Hex Editor. 
it is integrated into the program, so you don't need to look for extra tools. Right-click on the disk and select the Hex Editor line from the menu. Service information doesn't take much space, so don't wait for the search to be complete. After waiting a little, try searching another drive. If you couldn't find the beginning of the disk by MBR signature, repeat the search by GPT. And if the search gives no result, try searching by the reversed 4 by sequence. In our case, the beginning of the array was discovered on the second drive. Judging from the signature we have found, this drive has MBR partition style, and it's time to memorize the number of the sector. Now we can start building the array. Open the RAID constructor, next, manual mode, and specify all the properties you know. RAID type, block order, block size. Add the disks included into the array and specify their order. In my case, the NAS controller writes every 4 bytes in a reversed format, so I specify the property accordingly. One more property to specify is the offset by which the disk beginning can be identified. We've already done that. Right-click on the disk, change disk offset size. In the line offset, give the number of the sector for all the disks. then click Add. If you don't know all properties of the array, it is ok to only specify the RAID type and offset, and other properties will be selected automatically, but it's going to take much longer. After adding, the RAID array will appear on the drive list and in the drive manager. Scan it. Right-click on the drive, open, select Fast Scan. If the operation is successful, it will take less time to complete. When the scan is over, the program will display the results in this window. But if the fast scan can't find the information, then go for full analysis. Now select the files you want to restore and click Recovery. Choose the pathway to save them and click Recover again. When the process is over, you will see the recovered files in the folder you have chosen. Even with two damaged disks, the program managed to recover a certain amount of files which are still healthy and intact. In the course of building the array with the RAID constructor, you should add a few empty disks, the number equal to the number of the disks that have failed before. As we know, losing more than one disk renders this RAID type completely inoperable, so it is a really good result that our program managed to find and restore quite a good amount of the information. 
summing up, recovering data from NAS type RAID arrays is quite a complicated process. It is extremely important to know what you're doing and use reliable software tools, because even a slight error may result in losing all the information in a second. So, always remember to back up regularly, it can protect your files against data loss. Luckily, regardless of the device you are using and the controller type that your RAID system is based on, you can still recover your data as long as you follow the steps described in this video. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Push the bell button to receive notifications and never miss new videos. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck.